Hey friends, hey friends, hey friends, it's me Alana, welcome back to my channel. some flowers in a world full of weeds. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am actually going to be talking about some of the books I'm super excited to see come out next year in 2021. So I only limited to about five because I didn't want to make a really long video about this, but also because I am still keeping my eye out, so my list is still kind of short for right now. But I figured it would be fun to at least discuss some ones that caught my eye, and I think that are going to be really interesting to check out once they hit the shelves. So I have my handy dandy laptop here since I'm filming on my phone, and I have Goodreads pulled up so I can read you the synopsis of the books and stuff. But the first one I have is... All of Us Villains by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman. So I believe this one comes out in the fall of 2021. And it just sounds really interesting. You fell in love with the victors of the Hunger Games. Now prepare to meet the villains of the Blood Veil. After the publication of a salacious tell-all book, the remote city of Ilvernath is thrust into worldwide spotlight. Tourists, protesters, and reporters flock to its spell shops and ruins to witness an ancient curse unfold. Every generation, seven families name a champion among them to compete in a tournament to the death. The winner awards their family exclusive control over the city's high magic supply, the most powerful resource in the world. In the past, the villainous Lowe's have won nearly every tournament, and their champion is prepared to continue his family's reign. But this year, thanks to the influence of their newfound authority, each of the champions has a means to win. Or better yet, a chance to rewrite their history. Okay, that sounds amazing. It's basically the Hunger Games, but with villains. Like... That sounds so exciting! So I'm really looking forward to that. I haven't read anything by Amanda Foodie or Christine Lynn Herman, to be honest with you. Like, I have The Devouring Grey, and I don't think I have anything by Amanda Foodie. But this is definitely making me turn my interest towards them to see if maybe their writing could spark my interest. Because, again, this sounds super cool. I'm really excited to check it out. And it'll be a good, uh, fun time, I think, for a fall read. All right, the next book I have is Victoria Aveyard's new book, Realm Breaker. I'm reading Red Queen right now and I really like it so far. So I think I wanna try and pick up something else she's written too. So I'm definitely intrigued to see how I feel about this one. I believe this one comes out in the spring of next year. So again, I'm gonna read you the synopsis and we'll go from there. So, who is left when the heroes fall? Ker Corrine lives at the end of the world. Year after year, she watches her pirate mother sail away to adventures she'll never share with Corrine. So when a mysterious immortal and deadly assassin appear on Corrine's doorstep, telling her she is the last member of a dying bloodline and the only one who can save the world, Corrine seizes the chance to have her own adventure. But the world is in graver danger than they ever imagined. Corrine and her ragtag group of allies are alone in a world that is slowly coming apart at the seams with little but their fading hope to guide them. Now is not the age of heroes, but courage can bloom even in the darkest corners and it just might be enough to save everything. So one, it gives me the like squad trope, group of allies, I'm here for it. I love it when a group of people come together to save something or do something, whatever. So I'm here for that. It just sounds really interesting. It definitely sounds different than Red Queen. So I am intrigued to check out and see what else she can do in regards to her writing. All right. So the next book I have here is The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris. I loved Slay by Brittany Morris. So I am ready to get my hands on anything else she writes and I'm just really excited for this one too. So The Cost of Knowing comes out in 
spring of 2021 as well. 16 year old Alex Rufus is trying his best. He tries to be the best employee he can be at the local ice cream shop, the best boyfriend he can be to his amazing girlfriend Talia, the best protector he can be over his little brother Isaiah, but as much as Alex tries he often comes up short. It's hard for him to be present when every time he touches an object or person Alex sees into its future. When he touches a scoop he has a vision of him using it to scoop ice cream. When he touches his car, he sees it years from now, totaled and underwater. When he touches Talia, he sees them at the precip precipice of breaking up, and that terrifies him. Alex feels these visions are a curse, distracting him, making him anxious and unable to live an ordinary life. And when Alex touches a photo that gives him a vision of his brother's imminent death, everything changes. With Alex now in a race against time, death, and circumstances, he and Isaiah must grapple with their past, their future, and what it means to be a young black man in America in the present. So that sounds really interesting and I uh, like honestly heartbreaking <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to it because I feel like it's gonna be one of those books that really makes you think and really gives you a grasp on certain mindsets and stuff. So I'm definitely looking forward to checking this out. Again, Brady Morris is amazing. I loved Slay. If you haven't read it, you should definitely check it out. So I'm excited to read her second novel. All right, so the next book I have here is XOXO by Axie O. I hope I said her name right. If not, I apologize. One, the cover is really beautiful, which I'll put all of the covers up here, obviously. And it sounds like a cute little romance. So it comes out in the summer of 2021. So cello prodigy Jenny has one goal, to get into a prestigious music conservatory. When she meets mysterious and handsome Jai Wu in her uncle's Los Angeles karaoke bar, it's clear he's the kind of boy who would uproot her careful plans. But in a moment of spontaneity, she allows him to pour her out of her comfort zone for one unforgettable night of adventure before he disappears without a word. Three months later, when Jenny and her mother arrive in South Korea to take care of her ailing grandmother, she's shocked to discover that Jai Woo is a student at the same elite arts academy where she's enrolled for the semester. And he's not just any student, he's a member of one of the biggest K-pop bands in the world, and he's strictly forbidden from dating. When a relationship means throwing Jenny's life off the path she spent years mapping out, she'll have to decide once and for all just how much she's willing to risk for love. This sounds like such a cute story. One, K-pop. Two, like, they're both musicians. I love anything where both the main characters are musicians. Um, it just sounds really intriguing and I'm excited to check this out. And then the last book I have on this list that I'm really excited to check out is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. This comes out, so let me check, in the spring of 2021, and let's see, so Tamsin is the most powerful witch of her generation, but after committing the worst magical sin, she's exiled by the ruling covet and cursed with the inability to love. The only way she can get those feelings back, even for just a little while, is to steal love from others. Ren is a source, a rare kind of person who is made of magic, despite being unable to use it herself. Sources are required to train with the coven as soon as they discover their abilities, but Ren, the only caretaker to her ailing father, has spent her life hiding her secret. When a magical plague ravages the queendom, Ren's father falls victim. To save him, Ren proposes a bargain. If Tamsin will help her catch the dark witch responsible for creating the plague, then Ren will give Tamsin her love for her father. Of course, love bargains are a tricky thing, and these two have a long, perilous journey ahead of them. That is, if they don't kill each other first. Editing Alana here. I do not know what happened to the rest of this video. I guess my phone just broke out on me or something, but the ending did not film. But what I was trying to say about this book was it's female, female, it sounds amazing, and I'm really, really excited for it to hit shelves so I can get my hands on it. If you like the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, leave all that in the comment section. And uh, let me know some books you're excited to come out in 2021 so I can add some stuff to my list. And if you're not good at commenting, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an emoji down below. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button. You are all sunflowers in a world full of weeds.